Hello guys, my name is Piers Katz and today we're going to talk about value objects. Now, what are value objects? Let me show you an example right here. I have a console app and I have a customer class. Now that the customer is an entity in our program, it has its ID, it has a string address. Now we can have more properties, then we have a constructor and also we can have a lot of methods that adds function functionality to that customer class. Now I have an address there and I represent it as a string, but it's not really a string, is it? It has a lot of things like the zip code, the street, the street number, country, city, etc. For simplicity reasons, I have an address class that has a zip code, a street number and a street. So that uh, address instead of string, maybe it should be an address class. So I will change that and I will change that also in my constructor. Okay, and now we have an uh, address that holds um, uh, those um, three strings, the zip code, the street and the street number. But that uh, address, is it uh, an entity? Does it need to have an ID? I mean, it's only purpose is to hold those uh, three values, the zip code, the street and the street number. So that's a value object since it is a class it is an object that holds some values. It, do it doesn't need to have a unique identifier and its only purpose is to compose the th those values together. So if I go to my program.cs and let me copy and paste some code for creating to customers. So I will say something like that. And let's add the namespaces. Okay, we have two customers, customer one and customer two. Now they have the same address, as you can see, the zip code is 12345, the street is main street and the street number is one in both of them. So if I would say something like uh, console.writeline customer1.address.equals customer2.address since the addresses are the same, we would expect to see it true in the console. So let's run that. And we see false. That's because when we have to class and we use the equals method, we don't check our class by their properties. But uh, when we have a value object, we need to compare them by their values. So if they have the same exact values, they should be the same. So let's go and see how we can implement that. I'm going to create a new class. I will call it value object. And that would be an abstract class. And uh, we will have a method that uh, the derived class should implement. So I will say protected abstract i enumerable of object and that could be null. We will see how we can use it and what is purpose in a second. I will call that get equality components and then we will override the equals method so we will say public override bool equals and in here we will accept an object that could be null and we will call that the other object so we will call that in an object we it will compare it to that other object. So before we implement that equals, let's uh, go and um, implement the get equality components in the address uh, value object. So I will have it to inherit from the value object. And now we need to implement that method. And now what we are going to do is we're going to return every property of that uh, address in uh, some order. So I will say first I will return the zip code. So zip code, then I will say yield return the street. And finally, I will say yield return the street number. Okay, so now when we call that method in any uh, object of type address, we will have the zip code, the street and the street number. Now let's go back and implement the equals. Uh, method of the value object uh, abstract class. First of all, we need to make a check that if that other object is null uh, or that other object type is not equal to our type, so not so not equal to get type of the class that we are in, return false. 
And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that get equality components method to get all the properties uh, of uh, our object and all the properties of the other object so I can compare them one by one. So I will say var these properties equals with get equality components and then var other properties and if I was going to say other object dot get equality components I can call that method because uh, we have an object not a value object but we checked the type and the, we know that they are the same type as the value object that we compare it so I can cast that to a value object and then call that get equality components method okay now we have the properties of the object that we are in and the other object that we want to compare so I can say return these properties dot sequence equal and that uh, will take if uh, that two sequence the, these properties and the other properties are equal so I will say other properties and uh, now that uh, will return uh, true only if uh, the two objects have uh, the same uh, values now we can also simplify uh, this like that okay so it's exactly the same thing we cast that other object to a value object we get the equality components and uh, then we call the sequence equal method and we pass the get equality components of this object okay now as you can see my ID tells me that um, let me hover over this the value object overrides the equals but uh, does not uh, override the get hash code so when we talk about equality and overriding we also need to override the get hash code every object has a hash code and two different objects should not have the same hash code so we also need to override this so let's say public override int get hash code and now what we are going to do is we will call the get equal the components that we will return the properties of the object then we will select the hash code for each of these properties so get hash code and if that's null we will take zero and then we need to call the aggregate method and what we're going to do is to use the XOR operator to combine all these hash codes and that could be a null okay so that seems a little uh, complicated but all it does is uh, use XOR operator to combine all uh, the hash codes of uh, the properties to one hash code and it's doing that by getting the hash code of each uh, property and then making a XOR with uh, the hash code of the next property and does that uh, for all the properties of that object so now back to our program if uh, now we run that we will see that uh, those that the result will be true okay since we have overridden the get equals and now when the values are equal that equals will return true and then they are not equal let's say that that's in, that street numbers changes to two and we run that again now we'll see false okay that's how to create value objects one thing i forgot to mention is that back to my add class as you can see all uh, the properties are in it only because in domain driven design a value object should be immutable in that way uh, we know when we have a value object that is a valid one and when uh, we need uh, to change uh, that uh, address to the customer we don't make changes to the address but uh, we pass a new address instead now if you believe that that's quite a lot of work what we can do is use records that are immutable and they and the comparisons happens by their values so i can uh, go back to my address and i don't need to inherit from the value object i don't need the get equality components all i need is actually let me remove all that and turn it to a record so public record address and we have the zip code the street and then the street number
and now back to my program let me rewrite this off the camera and okay we now use that um, record so i initiate an address and then the same address in here and that's only a record we don't need to override the quality or something and now if i run the program we will see that the result is true and if i change the street number to the customer 2 we will see that uh, the result is false Okay, so that was introduction to value objects, how to create them um, with records, which is actually very simple, you create a record, or with glasses if you want to. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, thank you for watching and have a nice one.